I want to tell you three lessons that I didn't learn at school. I want to tell you the story of my childhood dream, how I could realize it. When I was a child, I had a dream. When I will be grown up, I want to travel around the world with a solar-powered car and raise awareness, show people all over in the world that we have solutions to stop global warming. Now, that was my dream. And um, when I talked to my friends about this, about 12 years ago when I started this, I was surprised. Nobody of my friends and people around me said, hey, wow, Louis, great, you're going to get an award for that. Nobody said, great, do it. People were kind of hesitating, and I could read their thoughts. They thought, Louis, are you crazy? What's up with you? You don't have an engineering background. You, you, you don't know how to do that. And of course, people were right. I was a school teacher. I can do a lot as a school teacher, but I'm not, I can't really do anything that has to do with building a solar powered car, right? So it was absolutely crazy to do something like that. And, um, you know, People value a lot what you have done in your life when you were a student, what you have studied. But I believed that I have a dream and I want to realize that dream. I don't have the right education, but is that a reason for not doing it? No, I think you can still do it. It's more important that you do your dream, that you have a life and you realize your dreams. And so I thought, I may not have the right education for that, but I have other experiences from life I've learned other things in my life which could be very useful for that. And that's what I want to tell you. I was a traveler also. I had a lot of experience from traveling. Now, many people say, hey, what's that worth? That's worth nothing. Traveling? Travel experience? But I have to tell you, there were three success factors in that project which were coming from my travel experience. And that's exactly what I want to tell you today. The first... Um, success factor for my successful project was actually my trip back in Africa in 1994. That was my first big journey. For seven months, I had traveled across Africa on a bicycle. Now, guess what? When I talked to my parents first time and to my friends when I was 23 years old, hey, guys, I'm going, bye-bye, see you again in seven months. I'm going all by myself across Africa, 10,000 kilometers for seven months on a bicycle. Do you know how excited they were? They all told me, Louis, you're crazy. You're going to kill yourself. There are lions there, there are elephants there. People will rob you. And I have to tell you honestly, I was really robbed. The most, <laughs> the, the worst thing that happened to me, I was robbed by German tourists. But other than that, what did I learn, except to take care of Germans? Um, <laughs> what else did I learn in Africa? You know, it wasn't a simple tour. I had the best times of my life and the worst days of my life. But I have to tell you, I learned one thing. I did never give up. I, every day I had reasons to ask myself, what the hell am I doing here all my, on myself between lions and elephants and giraffes and zebras in Africa on a bicycle? But the most important thing is what I've learned in my life, never give up. I was so proud at the end that I had never given up. Coming back to my solar powered car, this means I have the same challenge. I know that I have to raise three million francs. That's like cycling across Africa. When you're at the end, you may have it or maybe you don't have it. And uh, so the most important thing for me was don't give up when you raise money. I mean, I had a bank account, I had a Swiss bank account. Hey, wow, but it was empty, you know? <laughs> um, and people told me you need three million francs for that. So, but you know, from Africa I learned never give up. So I went from one company to another and asked them, hey, can you give me a motor? Can you give me a solar panels? Can you give me a wheel, a steering wheel, a horn, the brakes, whatever? And of course, many doors shut. People didn't want to help me, but one out of 10 doors opened. That was like Africa. Sometimes I had an overwhelming, great experience, a great day, but most of the days were just tiring on the bike, you know? And that way, I could save hundreds of thousands of francs because people gave me the parts and pieces. The second problem or the second challenge that I had, how am I going to assemble all this? I had the battery, I had the motor, I had the, the wheels, the, the lamps, everything. 
but who the hell is going to build that? I can't do that. I'm a school teacher. I'm not supposed to work on a car, you know? <laughs> That's what everybody told me. So it was maybe better somebody else is doing it. And then I remembered another big lesson that I learned in my life when I traveled in 1996 was in the United States. I had an airplane. With this airplane, I traveled across the United States for three months. And you know what my friends told me before I started? They all said, hey, Louis, you're crazy. You should say a teacher, you're going to crash. And I have to tell you honestly, I crashed several times. <laughs> but you know, that's the worst thing that can happen to you that you crash with your airplane. But actually, those are the best times. <laughs> because I crashed into people's garden. <laughs> and I got to know the whole village. <laughs> it was fantastic. And you would have never met those people. You know, and um, the thing is, the funny thing about it, what I learned, I was always afraid of asking people before if they can help me. I mean, the airplane was broken. Somebody had to fix it. I couldn't know. I didn't, didn't know how to fix my plane. But I always found somebody who fixed a plane. And I was so surprised to see that there were so many people who loved to help. That's something I learned in the United States. And... Um, so coming back to my solar car project, this means that I had to ask people. I shouldn't be afraid of asking people, so I asked friends, and especially people who I didn't know. And I told them, hey guys, you can be part of a fantastic adventure. People want to be part of an adventure. For whatever reason, people would like to do um, adventures, but they can't. So now I give them the possibility. They could be part of an adventure, so they help me. They always fi fix my plane, and I could I was always overwhelmed to see that my plane always made it back into the air again. And that's something I learned from my project. So when I, coming back again to my solar car project, I learned that um, you just have to ask people. I had about 200 people finally who helped me to build the car. I saved hundreds of thousands of francs and the car was really built. One day it was ready. The third big challenge for my tour was the following. When you travel around the world with a solar-powered car, great, you have a fantastic adventure, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to re reach the people all over in the world and raise awareness for the solar car, that we have solutions to stop global warming. For this, I need the media. So I have to be very creative. It's not just enough to sit in a solar car and drive around the world. So I remembered another experience. Another lesson that I learned in 2001, I was in Afghanistan on one of my journeys. I came into a village and the villagers couldn't believe that they saw a foreigner. They haven't seen a foreigner since 20 years. I suddenly, Louis was standing in front of them with his backpack from Switzerland. And all they could tell me, hey, wow, you're the first foreigner. Look at our school. Here is our school. Now, the school was bombed. There was nothing left of that school. Children, 750 children, were having school. They were taught inside shipping containers. And the elderly, elder people of the village told me, hey, Louis, go back to your country and do something. Bring us money that we can build a school. These children need a right school. So I, I was a little bit um, surprised to hear that. So how much do you need? And I was shocked. They needed $75,000. The first shock was, hey, where the hell should I take $75,000 from? I don't have that money. And the second shock, hey, in Switzerland, for $75,000, I cannot even buy the windows for a school. <laughs> That's a bargain. I believe in something. If there is a problem, there is a solution. You simply have to be creative. Now, I asked myself, what can I do to raise that money? It would be fantastic if I could buy something in Afghanistan for, I had $100 left. That was my last $100 that I had with me. I could buy something in Afghanistan, sell it in Switzerland for $75,000. Now, what do you think? What could you buy in Afghanistan for $100 and sell it in Switzerland for $75,000? Something legal. Any ideas? 
Now, I'm telling you what, I went to the money market. I had a crazy idea, all I can buy with $100 is money. I bought five and a half million Afghan rupees, they were called Afghanis. I came home, there was one kilogram of money in my bag. I came home with that. And what I've done, it was a, just a crazy idea, I thought, why not making, I, I had pictures. I had pictures taken in Afghanistan, not many people had that. So I thought I could make public speeches, presentations about Afghanistan. Everybody wanted to see my pictures, so I invited people in Lucerne, in Winterthur, Basel, Zurich, hey, come and see my speech. And what I've done, I was so surprised, thousands of people came to see my pictures of Afghanistan. So what I've done at the end of the presentation, when people left the, through the door, there was somebody, one of my friends standing there, and he made an exchange office. I told everybody, hey, today you have a chance to support my school. If you give me, and that's a unique exchange rate, believe me, the best <laughs> of Europe, if you give me 10 francs, I will give you 1,000 Afghani for that. People were crazy about that idea. They loved the idea. Hey, people gave me 20 francs, they gave me 50 francs, they gave me 100 francs. This thousand Afghani ha was worth two and a half cents. <laughs> right? I didn't make 75,000 francs. I made 150,000 francs. Half of that money I gave to the school, to the people there. The other half I gave to a hospital, which I saved the running of the ho hospital while the bombs were dropping down. In that time, the hospital could survive for two months. And uh, that was for me kind of really, it changed my life a little bit. I could see that I can make a difference on this planet. We always think that we, we can't do anything. But yes, we can. We just have to be creative. We have to do it. And coming back to my solar car project, what can I do creative in order to get the media attention? Is it, do I need a hell of an adventure in uh, India? Should I tell my adventure to everyone? Should I take great pictures of um, the landscape? Now, how do you get into the press? How can it be interesting that the press is talking about me? Now, to be very honest with you, the press, the press is never interested in me. <laughs> never, I can do whatever I want. They're always interested in someone else. So what did I do? I named my car Solar Taxi. And I always invited somebody important in my car to drive with me. You see the picture? The press was crazy to report about the other guy, never about me, you know? <laughs> and that's how I raised awareness. And I had all kinds of ministers, like the Swiss minister, Madame Leuthardt. I had world-famous film producer James Cameron. I could name it, name it, one after another. I had UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon with me in New York. And always the press. I reached more than one billion people through the press with my little message that we have solar-powered cars. We can even go around the world, ha ha ha, everybody could go to work with it. It is ready. The technology works. United Nations heard about me heard about the project, and imagine this, my dear friends, that's also part of the story. I got the world's biggest environmental award, the, the Champion of the Earth Award in New York. That was fantastic, what a big honor, it's also part of my story. And I have to tell you honestly, all my friends here in Switzerland who thought that I'm crazy, they changed their mind in the very moment when they heard that I got this prize from Giselle Bündchen. <laughs> I have reached my goals, I was so happy. <laughs> hey, no more dependence on oil. United States, listen to my message. And also Switzerland and Germany and everybody else, of course. I have to tell you honestly, there were three lessons in my life that I learned, the most important ones, not at school. Lesson number one, never give up. People love to help, be creative. Don't forget them, that's what I want to give to you on your way in your life. Give, love, create. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>